I'll uh, introduce the episode. Well, I mean, I could. We can mix it up. Don't need to be formulaic. Well, I the only intro I got is that it's this is one of the most memorable episodes to me, standalone episodes for me, anyways. But just because. Well, of, let's intro, and then I want to segue right back into that. Too late, already introed. Oh fuck it! <laughs> because I guess I'm just kind of curious because I think you like this episode a heck of a lot more than I do. I I guess I'm just kind of curious what you think makes it so memorable. By the way, we're talking about episode four, The Angel of Ruin, for those of you who thought our well, intro look was... look in the title of the know, video, you should know what it is. I th- well, readings for squares. I mean, this is coming from the guy with <laughs> a book over there, but that's fine. But, I mean, I guess, for me, it just doesn't seem like that this episode is particularly exceptional compared to some of the other episodes out there. I don't know if it's exceptional comparatively, but it's memorable to me, for me personally. Mostly because of Sophita, and that she's just intriguing, I guess. You see, I was gonna say, to not be the person who has to say the opposite of everything, devil's advocate here, I don't know why I stroked on the ro- word then, then I had English problems. But, I mean, I just, like, she's just weird like i don't disagree (laughs) well it's it just doesn't make any sense she's like she only can show her emotions through fighting which i mean i guess the thing is that i wish they'd focused on is not so much that she just expressed her emotions through fighting because like she's like i love you mister and then starts attacking cash and i'm just like fuck i don't know what she based her statement of love on so it was weird but i mean i could understand a bit. Maybe just the heat, heat in the heat of the moment because he was actually like fighting back at that point. Mm, I don't know. I, I don't know. It was weird, but I, I do think that she is interesting a, a bit. In now that I think about it, just because I mean, and well, the obvious thing about this episode is that there is there con- totally conflicting ideologies. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up because it's it is interesting because. I mean, Cashern, he doesn't really want to fight. He hates it. <laughs> well, he just knows what, you know... He's good at... He's really good at it, but he does not want, want to do it. Well, he proved he was fucking good at it, because when him and Sophita fight, it was literally like... He was just like... He was just standing there. He was like, like, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> pushes her away, and it's like, no! No! He was like, no, pretty much... Lu- no, Luca, no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and then Salvita is the complete opposite of that in that she loves fighting and it's the only way that she can feel alive, which is that I wish they had focused more on that more so because it, it just that whole I love you stuff was a little weird and I don't think they should have had that, but the idea that in this, you know, kind of post apocalyptic world she can only find joy in the destruction of others, and then Catherine's like the complete opposite. He destroys others, and he's absolutely miserable because of it. Yeah. Well, and the fact that he can't die. Because mm-hmm. he's, he's like, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Which does make me... I mean, I like that line that he said where he's like, I guess we can, then I guess we can never understand each other. Yeah, yeah, it's really a good line that I thought addressed kind of the idea that this episode is about pretty much the completely opposite views Sovita and Kashern have as to how the world, uh, or how fighting should be, I guess I should say. I mean, I thought it was interesting, too, so. I guess, I, I mean, overall I wouldn't say it was a bad episode, I just don't think it was as memorable as the others, just because I don't care for Sovita that much. I like what she does, just the whole, you know, contrast between her and Kashern. But I don't care so much for her as a character herself. I guess one other thing that this episode kind of starts to make evident is the fact that you can tell which which characters will be significant based on how different they look. Because you got all these gray mooks running around <laughs> and they're just nameless mook robots. And <laughs> then you have the big alpha mook who still looks like a mook, but he was a little different, but still a mook. He actually has a unique design more so than, and a face. 
Yeah, and then Sophita, you can tell, is going to be the most important one because she's colorful and stuff. She doesn't which, look anywhere close to the same. Which I did, I did think was interesting because at the end there, Cashin was uh, talking about how he found like life out here in this dead world in Sobita. Did you catch that? Well, she, he's someone who continues to live. Yes, and I thought that was interesting, again, because I think we brought up earlier that, you know... The show likes to show the absolute ruin of the world, but it also likes to show that there's life out there, and that life, the Jurassic Park, life will find a way. Mm-hmm. Unless you read the book, in which case, life will shit on you. But, I mean, it, I thought that was interesting. Again, continuing with the theme. I was going to say, on that other robot, I did like that, I mean... It was an interesting little world building tidbit that they that he said that he was like the guard for breaking boss. Breaking boss. Right. Thank you. Names are hard. Wait, when did they say that? He did this. They yeah. didn't say that. Yeah. He said oh. that like early on, like when he was first introduced, he was like, "Yeah, um, I was like, I was one of the higher ups with breaking boss," and so I must have like spaced out the split second. For a split second, and that's what I meant. I mean, it's just interesting because he kind of is important in the back. Is that the first time we heard about Breaking Boss? Because I feel like it is. Breaking Boss. I can't say it right. I yeah, that's, I think that's the first time we ever heard so, I his mean, name. And the thing is, I those like cliffhanger world building tidbits, which this one's not so much a cliffhanger because it gets more important as the show progresses but i get i do get annoyed by the fact that so much of it is uh those world building tidbits are just kind of cliffhangers to nothing but the show doesn't explain a lot anyways so you gotta glean what you can from just passing comments and little things along the way yeah exactly because they won't explicitly lay it out for you and be like here you go spoon feed you can't see what i'm trying to spoon into his mouth right now but yeah, so, I mean, it was an alright episode. I liked what it, uh, it did for Cashin as a character, but I, I, was, I would disagree that I cared. T- I didn't care too much for Solvita in the end. I didn't care a lot for her, I just, she just made the episode memorable, that's all I was saying. I, I guess I could see that. Not so much for, again, not so much for her own sake, but for Cashin and his character's sake. <clears throat> Which is all about the main character anyway, so it works out. And the one other thing that I that I want to note about this episode is that's the first time that they ever used the song Luna, which is that godly song that I showed you before. Far and away the best song on the soundtrack. That's not the ooh, ooh, one. Yeah. Is that? Okay. They just didn't actually do that part. They showed like they had like every part except for the ooh, part. That's a good song. Yeah, the soundtrack to the show. It, it's got a lot of very good tone setting pieces that complement it well. Except the OP. Yeah. OP don't make sense. I mean, a lot of the songs I would say are not good listening to listening material in and of their own themselves, but when they're in the context of the show, they work really well. They sound pretty jarring and stuff. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine some melancholy piece like that. You're walking to class and all of a sudden... (laughs) Well, I mean, not like that. Like, Luna, I think, is a great listening material song. But, I mean, like, just the... Just a lot of the other less noteworthy songs are kind of just not... (laughs) Not good listening to listening material of themselves. I don't listen to soundtracks, so I'll take your word for it. On to the next episode.